Hello, this is Roland. Welcome. Today I want to take a few minutes just to talk about a little bit of this and a little bit of that. First of all, I want you to know that uh, I've been around for 25 years, okay? And I'm a volunteer. I don't have an organization you can belong to. don't have a church you can belong to or any kind of an organization. It's just me, my microphone, my laptop, okay, and my desktop, and that's it. Now, that's good. It's easier for me to focus on what's important. See, if I had, uh, and I have been a chaplain, I've been a chaplain at a, at a hospital, volunteer chaplain, and I've, um, I've had a, a job for many years where I was helping people. And I know that that can take a lot of time and um, use up a lot of energy. And this way, I have more time to focus on what's really important. Okay? And also, what's nice, see, I've been on the radio for 25 years. Let me tell you a little bit about radio. Radio is a very interesting medium. When you go on, the, when you're on the radio, people listen, and before long, they feel like they know you. It's like you're a friend. It's like, it's like a conversation. They listen. It's very relaxing because they don't have to do anything. See, if you're talking to a person, a real live person, in phone or in front of you, then there's a kind of a tension there, isn't there? A little bit of a tension and you have to be a little bit on and so on but um, a little but when you're on the radio it's kind of relaxed and it's e easy for people to listen okay so um, they like so it's very personal 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 med media personal personal and personable see okay and that's good because I can sit and talk and you can listen if you're listening to me on the radio. And when I talk and you listen, then you can glean insights, information, see, learn something without any pressure. See, most of the time in life there's pressure, isn't there? You feel like you have to perform, you have to worry about what they think, what impression you're making, or someone is there, your boss is there, your parent is there, your spouse is there. There's always some kind of a pressure. Or the other person, they can pressure you. They can demand an answer, for example. Or um, act like they don't understand what you're saying, even if they do. See, they can even put that kind of pressure on you. So all of our life, we've been around people that have pressured us parents, other kids, bullies, teachers, coaches, pressure. I remember when uh, years ago my son knew a very nice uh, young man who was a pianist. He played the piano very well. But whenever he began to play the piano, his hands began to sweat tremendously. Tremendously. Now, why do you suppose that was? It's because when he was little, someone had pressured him. See? So, pressure is not a good thing, parents. It's not good to pressure or tease or challenge. Um, so, when I'm on the radio, I can talk, or even as I am now, and there's no pressure. That's very nice. So, you can listen thoughtfully. Okay, which is very nice. So that's what I've been doing for 25 years. And that's good because people all over the world uh, uh, listen to me. Not a lot, it's a small number. See, what I have is something a little special. I have something a, l a little special. That hopefully, Lord willing, for some people, it doesn't work for everyone. 
but some people it helps them to to either have confidence again in what they know in their heart see we doubt ourselves see you when you remember when you were a little kid you said something and then everybody acted like you were wrong why is aunt my aunt why is aunt being mean your aunt is not mean why your aunt is a wonderful person you shouldn't say that about your aunt see well it's true the aunt was being mean the little child saw that the aunt was being mean but it's like the child is wrong for being right see you can't win for losing sometimes so you're not allowed to see what you see you're not allowed to think what you think it's not easy sometimes to be a kid just remember what Christ said remember how he loved children okay so you parents you be be kind to your children that doesn't mean being wimpy and weak but be kind have a light touch have a twinkle in your eye don't be angry don't pressure your children see so where was I oh yes so um, so that's what what I like about the radio so what do I do well what I do is I talk about the, 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 the most important things the most important things now what's the most important thing the most important thing for you is to may I may I just come right out and say it okay not beat around the bush the most important thing for you is to is to connect with God to connect with your Creator all of your problems in fact all the problems of the world financial problems health problems relationship problems mental problems uh, spiritual problems you, you name it all the problems of the world and all the wars and turmoil and terrible things that happen is because people are disconnected from a rapport with their Creator see so when you have a whole mass of millions of people who instead of looking to reason to what they know in their heart and being able to find it and doing what's right when you have a whole bunch of people who are in rebellion against see see let me see if I can explain something see some people okay th look there are two types of people who are disconnected from God with three types that are disconnected from God the first type are those they're decent people but they've been mistaught that could very likely be you if you're a decent person you've you've been taught to look for answers to outside authorities and experts or to uh, study and then look into your brain okay for some kind of an answer that pops up from something that you learned or memorized in the past see but you're not taught to look to your intuition your God-given intuition written in what's written in your heart okay there's much I could say about this okay but you know in your heart see it's what it's what binds people of goodwill together it's what makes people of goodwill brothers and sisters from all over the world no matter what race what creed what what country of national origin see makes them brothers and sisters it's a love of truth and, a, and a acknowledging truth and seeing the truth okay it comes from the light from God's light that shines and those people who are close to the light they realize in the light see what is a realization it talks in the Bible about the word made flesh see th those are not mere words the word made flesh there's different aspects of it but one aspect is realizing see when you see here's what say, let's say uh, you know how it, what it is to, to get a math problem you know where you're sitting around and 
you're, you're working on a math problem, you, a word problem, math word problem, and you're not quite sure, and then all of a sudden, oh, and then you know how to set the problem up and solve it. See, you know how to how to write the equation and then plug in the numbers and then solve it. But you have to kind of see it. Same thing with a joke. You have to get it. Somebody tells a joke, but you have to get the joke. Oh, I see. Then you get get the joke. It's called the aha moment, the eureka moment. Okay. Uh, many scientists have said that they all of a sudden saw, just like that, in a lightning flash, what what had taken hundreds of years and thousands of years and no one had ever seen it before. In a lightning flash, they see it. Okay. That's the see. It comes from God. When you start to when you start to pay attention to your intuition, which is wordless, and not only do you pay attention to it, you, you're able to find it, you pay attention to it, and then you follow it. See, you have to follow through with your realization. It's a, the Bible says, "Faith without works is dead." If you don't follow through, there's, there's, the action is not completed. But now I want to focus on one basic, simple thing that I talked about, a realization. Remember the aha moment, eureka moment? So there's a light of truth shining. It's like a light shines. And our soul can receive that light. Except when you hide in thinking. See, that's your problem. Remember I said earlier that there's different kinds of people who are cut off from God. The, the first type is the decent person, perhaps like you, a decent person, but you've been mistaught. You haven't been taught to, to look to your intuition. See, you've been taught to look to knowledge, to external experts, and to study, and to books, and then to look into your, um, your feverish animal brain to dredge up some kind of an answer from there. See, something you memorized in the past, and then, and then apply it. See, and it's always wrong, and the timing's wrong. And see, what you need is fresh, just in time. Knowledge, wordless understanding, for delicate moments. Sometimes, whether you get in a car or don't get in a car, whether you immediately go or you wait five seconds. See, whether you say net yes or you back off, and whether you get involved or you don't get involved can make a world of difference. See, sometimes with your with your partner, your children. Your children can see whether you have understanding or not. They can see whether you're whether you answer them soulfully and thoughtfully and honestly in the moment or or whether you're you're bringing up some thing that you memorized. See, to use on them see, which lacks spontaneity and it lacks love. Okay, they can see the difference. So, so now you see how you can be mis, um, misled to, to look in the wrong, uh, all, all through school, you know, you've been taught to, to look in the wrong place. Not that knowledge is, is, is wrong, not that knowledge is bad, but knowledge without understanding is lopsided and shallow and is actually dangerous. What you need is knowledge with understanding, okay? First understanding, first intuition. Intuition, intuition, intuition from God, wordless intuition, what you know in your heart. And then knowledge can f come from that, see? Or you, go, you read something or hear something, and then within you will see in the light whether what's being said is true or not or whether it's maybe not true. See, you'll see. I can go into a bookstore and wander around and just pick up a, and pick up a book and for some reason I pick that book up and then I look in the book and, it ha and there's something in there that's of value. I, in fact, I, I don't even have to go in, into a bookstore. I can, every, as I go through my life, every day, every, everything, I open a newspaper up and I see something. Oh. I see how it, how it confirms or, or relates to some principle that, that I have discovered. 
you see, or which I know in my heart. Okay, so, um, so you see, so that's what I do. I try to help people refine their intuition. First, I make you aware that you have intuition, okay, and that humans are supposed to live by intuition. In the Bible, it says live, live by faith. How, how many times do you see that in the Bible? Live by faith. That's very important. Well, now you know what that means. It means live, living by your intuition, trusting what you know in your heart, see? And then follow, and then living that way. So you live spontaneously, basically. You live life like, like a symphony playing one note at a time. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't even know what I'm going to say next. Today I turned the microphone. I turned on the, uh, the video cam. And I didn't know what I was going to say. And so what I'm saying now is coming to you spontaneously from the present, from the present moment, from the present not pre-planned. I don't have any notes. Okay. Now, um, so I help people to refine their intuition, and that's what my meditation is for. It helps you to refine your intuition mainly by getting out of your thinking. See, see, if you when you stand back from thought, then there's the light, and then your soul can receive understanding from can receive something from that light. Just like a plant. A plant puts out its leaves. Okay? And the leaves receive the sunlight. The light and warmth from the sun. And that's life for the plant. The plant is an expression of the sun. Okay? And then when the plant receives that light, then that it uses that light to make, see, fruit, beautiful flowers. You see, they're made from sunlight. When you see a beautiful rose, it's an expression of the sun. It's made from light. It's amazing. So the plant takes a little bit of water and a few minerals maybe out of the ground and uses the sun to make wonderful things. Well, likewise, a human being, if your soul is receptive and you learn to be still and you get out of your thinking, see, if you're lost in the dungeon of thinking, down there in the dungeon of gloom, down there in your imagination, and down there in worrying and planning and scheming and reliving the past and worrying about the future, see, it's like being down in a dark dungeon. So you need to come out of that dark dungeon and up to the light to receive God's spiritual light. Okay, and then your soul, you, can use the little tidbits of knowledge that you see, like I use knowledge. I have learned some vocabulary and some rules of grammar, and I've read some things and studied some things, so I have little tidbits of, of knowledge, and they are collated in the light. The words are collated in the light even now as I speak. I don't know what I'm going to say next. They're collated in the light, and then present. It's presented as something, something uh, useful. Okay, from the light. Okay, so that's why the meditation is so important. It helps you get out of thinking, out of the imagination, and stand back. That's all. Just stand back. So then the light can shine upon things, and your soul can receive from the light. Okay, download. It's like your soul can download. Every morning, you get up and drag yourself to meditate for five minutes. Like I always say, and I'm not trying to be sacrilegious, but, you know, you get out of bed and drag yourself to the bathroom and sit on the to put the toilet lid down and sit on the toilet. Okay? For five minutes. See? The first thing in the morning. It represents a commitment to wanting God in your life, to wanting to know the truth. Whatever it means. See, most people don't want to know the truth because they don't want to know about their own wrong. Plus, they're afraid the truth will put a wet blanket on their designs. See, there, there's something that's too important to them. They don't want to give up. Okay? 
but then you can download a little something to begin the day. That's all that meditation is. Very simple. So I talk about that and I help people with a simple meditation. And then, of course, I have all my books. My books where I go into detail about these things. So, Like, for example, I have a, one, a book called um, A Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. That's a very nice book. I don't talk about it a lot. A Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. Would you like to see it? Let, let me go get it. Here it is. So it's, a week, it's called A Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. On the cover is a picture of Albert Einstein when he was a young man. And also a picture, a painting, a representation of a painting of, of St. Augustine. Now in this book, this is a big book. It's like uh, 300 pages, 400, over 400 pages. There's a lot in this book, but one of the things that's in here that I, that I really like a lot is I have chapters on intuition. And I talk about how Einstein loved intuition and how his discoveries came from intuition. A lot of people don't know that. See? He used his imagination as, as was a tool of intuition. And then I talk about Augustine. Now, Augustine loved God. And he realized many wonderful things. And his intuition was more in the form of conscience originally. See, intuition and conscience are the same thing, so you didn't know that either. See? Intuition is like knowing in advance, a little bit of present sight and foresight. Realizing in the light, oh, I see, present sight, okay? Conscience. Conscience is when you don't follow your intuition, which most people don't. They don't even, a lot of people don't even know they have it. They don't follow it. And then it comes back as 2020 hindsight. See, your, the light from God is still there. But this time, knocking on the door of your mind and saying, hey, you messed up. You, you were impatient with your kids. You resented that person. You were phony. You were dishonest. See? Making you aware in hindsight. So, if you could just sit still for your conscience and bear the little bit of pain of having a little bit of egg on your face and, and admit that you did something that wasn't good, then you could become friends with conscience, friends with conscience, friends with intuition again. But most of us spend our whole life as escaping from conscience, so we become very guilty before the truth. Very guilty. Okay, mostly for for denying the truth and escaping from the truth and making excuses, and um, and for and guilty for usually for, for a lot of hate too. Most of us are guilty of resentment and judgment and hatred of people. So anyway, so there there has to be a reconciliation. There has to, you have to come back to God. Okay, now there's a uh, there's a protocol of submission. It's called repentance. In the Bible, they talk about repentance. Okay, but you can't make it happen. You can't repent yourself. God repents you. And all you can do is yearn for the truth. Okay, yearn for God. With all your heart. Okay. And... That's all you can do. See, it, uh, th those people who ultimately come to God, who, f who find their intuition and are reconciled through a, a, a process of, of which God is in charge, and those who don't, the difference has to do with an inclination of the soul. Now, for a long time, many of us, maybe all of us, our soul has been inclined a little bit, tilted a little bit away from the truth. Because we didn't want to admit that we were wrong. See? 
we didn't want to admit we were wrong. Okay. But at a certain point, a certain time, and I can't tell you why, and I can't tell you when it's going to happen, and it won't happen a second before the time that it's ready to happen, the person, instead of leaning away from truth, leans into the truth and says, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of living a lie. I want to know the truth. I don't care what, what it is, what the consequences are. I just want to come clean. I want to come clean. Okay? All right. So now you have an idea of what um, what I'm about here. And I hope that uh, you can listen to my radio programs or watch some of my YouTube videos and, of course, try the meditation. Meditation is important because, see, we get so, we're so used to escaping into our thinking, our imagination, to hide from the light. And a lot of us don't even know where to, how to find our intuition, so you need a little help. And that's what I'm here for. I'm a temporary helping hand. So, you, you see, I, I'm, I, I'm not, I haven't given you any dogma, any doctrine. I don't lay any trips on you. I say, if you can relocate your intuition, then you will have found the source with a capital T, a, a source with a capital S, of the truth, truth with a capital T. If you find the, the inner light from God, then you will be able to know you 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 will see what you need to see and know what you need to know okay you'll see your own wrongs and be repented of them and then you'll see many wonderful and shining truths okay and it'll be like private privately realized and you'll want to tell everybody about all the wonderful things that you're discovering but it'll be to a world that's not quite ready yet see nevertheless you can set a good example for people and uh, talk about meaningful things. You know, nowadays, what, what do most people talk about? Trivia and meaningless things and unimportant things. And everything is a distraction, an evasion from, from the truth. See, or people present a, um, see, there, and, and then there's too much talk about truth. See, what, but what you need to do, what you need is to experience the truth. Okay? All right. Well, thanks for uh, stopping by, and uh, check out, like I said, different resources that I have. My name is Roman.